Hi, I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional here at West Haven Golf Club in Franklin, Tennessee. And welcome to a new season of Golf Tips here on Sunday Sports Central. It's been a long, long winter here in Nashville, and we've had our golf clubs put away for quite a long time. The first thing to go is almost always the short game. So today, we're going to talk about the club that hits 42% of our strokes, the putter. So what I have here is a four-foot metal ruler. The four-foot ruler is going to allow us to make sure that all of our lines are square. So the first thing we can do is we can set the putter face flush to the edge of the ruler. So now that I know my putter face is square. The second piece that will allow me to do is to get my eyes to look down the line properly. I almost always look to the left. And from here, this will allow me to stroke a putt. And when I follow through, I will be able to see if my putter face stayed square because it is imperative as a good putter to keep the putter face square from one ball in front of the ball to one ball past the ball. The face needs to be square for that long. So when we hit putts, we'll be able to check to make sure that the putter face stays square by using the lines on the ruler. Now I'm going to try to roll it right down the ruler, keep my putter face square. Use this four foot metal ruler to get you online, both of the club face and your eyes. You're going to make more putts from inside of five feet. And that's a very critical part to shoot lower scores. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional. Stay with us next week for another tip to improve your game. Hi, I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional here at West Haven Golf Club in Franklin, Tennessee. And today we're going to work on what everybody wants to work on, hitting the driver long and straight. Here's how you do it. The keys are making a tight turn where we turn our shoulders 90 degrees. But here's the big keys. The ability to get the trailing arm so for the right-handed golfer, it's the right arm. The left-handed golfer, it's the left arm. Underneath the lead arm, release the golf club with your arms, swinging up and hitting up on the ball, eerily similar to chopping down a tree with an ax. So here are the keys. When we're chopping down a tree, the first thing that would be natural is our head would stay back, the trailing arm would get under the lead arm, and we'd hit it right here, braced and moving forward. Most people split wood. They come in here and they go over the top of the plane. So once again, we are trying to chop down the tree, not split wood. So here we go. Perfect. So what we want to do, remember, stay behind it, chop down the tree for long and straight drives. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional. Stay with us next week for another tip to improve your game. Hi, I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teacher Professional here at West Haven Golf Club in Franklin, Tennessee. Today we're going to talk about the most errored part of the game, which is alignment, and how we can use an alignment aid to help not only fix our aim, but to fix our golf swing. So what we want to do, we want to take a club that we're not using and aim it exactly at the target line. So now, every talent level should use this. A tour player to the rank beginner should always have a golf club sitting just outside the ball for aim purposes. The reason why it's going to help us understand the golf swing is, is that when you're watching your divots, it's going to tell you the direction that your swing is going. So very few people, but it's a very common mistake, is the hook will show you that the divot is coming from inside to out and would hit the shaft. And for people who slice the golf ball, which is the vast majority, they would show that they would hit the shaft and then come back in. What we really want to do is have our divot go down the line. So here's a quick tip to help you if you are a slicer of the golf ball. Take a water bottle that has got about an inch and a half of water in it and place it about two feet behind the ball right on your line. Our main objective is to miss the water bottle. My divot right down the line, my ball flew right at the target, Drills of success. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional. Stay with us next week for another tip to improve your game. Hi, I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional here at West Haven Golf Club in Franklin, Tennessee. And today we're going to talk about the most important part of the game, which is impact, and how it affects the short game, which is very important. What I see most people do when they're hit around the green hitting their short shots is that they come into the golf ball and they, they feel like they have to get underneath and lift up on the ball. But that's incorrect. What we want to do is we want to feel like we hit down on the golf ball with our hands forward in what I call the lowercase y position. We want to feel like our arms are in the lowercase y position 
not the capital Y position. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our alignment stick, and what we're going to do is we're going to place it on the golf club up by the grip so that it extends significantly out the back end of the golf club. What this is going to allow us to do is to stop trying to lift it because it's going to whack you in the rib. That's how it got its infamous name, the rib beater. So what we want to do is we want to swing so that the golf club does not touch our ribs. This gives us that lowercase y position and impact and you just wrap the golf club around your body and you do that with rotations. We got the rib beater put in place. We get set up. So remember when we hit a chip shot, the stance is narrow and the weight's forward. Now we're looking for that lowercase y impact. Perfect. I'm still breathing. Nobody got hurt. And the rib beater helped me get to that lowercase y position. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional. Stay with us next week for another tip to improve your game. Hi, I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional here at West Haven Golf Club in Franklin, Tennessee. Pace of play is a huge issue in golf, and I'm going to show you three ways to speed up your round of golf without rushing and hurting your game. The first place where we can speed up the pace of play is from the fairway. If it's not your turn to play, here's when it's time to find out how far you are, what is the wind doing, and get your strategy ready for the shot you want to play. So I know that I'm 127 yards, so I'm going to choose 9-iron. So I pull my 9-iron out, and here's where I might make some practice swings while I wait for my playing partners to play their shot. The reason I want to do this is I want to have all that done so that when it's my turn to play, I step in and hit the shot in a timely fashion. The second place where we can make up time is when we're on the putting green and it's not our turn to putt. This is the time for us to step back, make sure we're out of the line of the person who's putting, but it's time for us to read the green ourselves so that when it's our turn to putt, we're not wasting time reading it, we've already read it. So when he's getting ready to set up, I can tell that my putt's going up the hill and breaking to the right. So as soon as he hits his putt, I can step in, mark my ball, and I already know what I want to do. The third place where we can make up time on the golf course is that the first person to putt out should be the first person to walk to their bag, grab their driver, and go to the next tee. There's no honor here. First person to putt out is the first person to tee off on the next hole. Follow these three simple rules to speed up play and improve the enjoyment of everybody playing golf. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teaching Professional. Stay with us next week for another tip to improve your game. Isn't that just great? I've laid myself up on a par five into a ferry bunker. Hi, I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teaching Professional. And I'm going to show you three fundamentals to get us out of the fairway bunker and onto the green, make an easy par. So I've stepped in the bunker and I've assessed my lie. I have 118 yards to the hole and my ball's sitting perfect in the sand. The first thing we need to do is take one more club. So this is my normal sand wedge yardage, so I'm going to take my pitching wedge. The second fundamental is we want to dig our feet in so our heels are very grounded. One of the reasons what makes the fairway bunker shot so difficult is the fact that our feet will tend to move in the sand when we make our swing. So the second part of why we choose one more club is that we need to swing slower so that we don't make our feet move in the sand. Because if, if our feet move in the sand, we will hit it fat. And number three is a tip that I got from Tom Watson when playing out of fairway bunkers. Is that you want to feel like you have the club head hovered over the top middle of the golf ball. This will buy us a little insurance for our innate desire to try to pick it out of the sand. I've chosen one more club. I've dug my heels in to be braced into the sand. And I'm going to hover the club over the top middle of the golf ball. Now for a nice, relaxed swing. Follow these simple fundamentals. You'll get yourself out of the bunker. And at the end of the day, it'll be your hand out and their wallet out. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional. Stay with us next week for another tip to improve your game. Yep, that's me. That's not pretty. Hi, I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teaching Professional. And if you've ever played golf with me, you know that I can take you places you've never been, both good and bad. And we have found ourselves in a whole world of bad. So here I have found myself inside the water hazard. Here's the red stake. I got knee high grass and overhanging trees. Almost everybody's tempted to try to thread it through the high grass underneath the tree and run it up by the green thinking that they're a hero. But that's just the wrong thing to do because that turns a bogey into a triple bogey or worse. 
what we're going to do is play smart and pitch it back out in the fairway. So we're going to take our sand wedge, we're going to choke up to it right down to the end of the grip. We're going to play it in the back of our stance so that we have a more descending blow or that the golf swing is going to travel very vertically down because we don't want the high grass to wrap around the shaft. If the high grass wraps around the shaft too much, it closes the club face and the ball stays in the trouble and that's no good. Okay, so here we go. I've chosen my sand wedge. I'm gripping down to the end of the grip. The ball's back in my stance and I'm gonna make a very up-down golf swing and chop it out of here. So follow these simple steps to get yourself out of trouble and reduce your scores. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional. Stay with us next week for another tip to improve your game. I've hit another errant tee shot and I've found myself in jail once again. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional. I'm gonna show you how to assess the situation to figure out whether we need to pitch it back out in the fairway, or make an aggressive play and take it at the green. Okay, here's our predicament. I'm 140 yards to the hole. I have a reasonable good lie, but I do have some tree trouble. At 140 yards, that's my pitching wedge. But I can't hit pitching wedge because that's gonna launch the ball into the tree. So I'm gonna choose my eight iron. And I'm gonna choose to play it at the right side of the green where I have all the room in the world I can't go at the flag stick because I can hit it in the water. So right now, I'm taking eight iron because my opponents think that I'm out of the hole and they're gonna win this hole, but we're gonna prove them wrong. So I got my eight iron. I'm gonna play it back in my stance just a little bit to make sure it comes out low. Make a three quarter swing. When we're on the golf course, we make proper decisions. We can choose between pitching out in the fairway or playing aggressively like we did. Making the right decisions lowers your score. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional. Stay with us next week for another tip to improve your game. Hi, I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional, and today I'm gonna to show you three fundamentals that are gonna improve your ball striking. So today I've enlisted Matt Walter, our assistant teacher here at West Haven, very well dressed by the way, to demonstrate these three fundamentals. First of all, no matter what style of grip you have, whether it be considered strong, where you see three or four knuckles in the left hand, or weak, which you would only see one, no matter how you grip it, the first fundamental of the backswing would be that the golf club would rest on the left thumb. Most people error with the golf club resting in the fingers. This puts the club in a very closed position and the club face is shut and it gets heavy. The golf club should sit on your hand. It will feel much lighter when the golf club sits on the left thumb. So from this position with the golf club resting on the left thumb, the first move down should be the left knuckles bowing down and getting on the chair. This is gonna be a very radical thought for most people because most people will come in here and what I call karate chop the chair, which leaves the face open and what causes the slice. And the third fundamental is the body has to rotate, dragging the knuckles across the chair into the finished position with the right shoulder and belt buckle facing the target. If you follow these three fundamentals, I promise you your ball striking gets better. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional. Stay with us next week for another tip to improve your game. Hi, I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional here at West Haven Golf Club in Franklin, Tennessee. Along with me is my assistant, Matt Walter, and we're gonna expand off of last week's tip where we had the, the chair and talking about impact. Now we're gonna talk about impact and through to the finish. Go ahead and set up to it for me, Matt. One of the big issues that I see almost everybody struggle with is that how the brain thinks it's gonna get the ball up into the air. Almost everybody believes that at the beginning that we have to figure out a way to get under the ball and lift it up into the air for it to fly high and straight. But that's not correct. Well, I call that scooping or upper level management skills of a Baskin and Robbins employee. We don't want any ice cream. We want to be pressing down on the golf ball. So when, one of my favorite drills is something that is, you can only need a shaft, stick it in the ground. So go ahead and set up to the ball, I mean, to the shaft for me, Matt. So if you're a scooper and you're coming in, you're lifting it off the ground, all you can do is bend the shaft and you can see the wrists are coming apart, pushing on the shaft. But if you do it correctly, you get the hands forward, you bow the left wrist, and you pull it out of the ground. The shaft stays straight. You get full extension in the finish. If you follow this drill, we're gonna eliminate the scoop and turn you into a great ball striker. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional. Stay with us next week for another tip to improve your game. Hi, I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional here at West Haven Golf Club in Franklin, Tennessee. As we all know, Mother Nature beat us up pretty good this winter. 
and we have a lot of areas around the green and on the golf course that haven't greened up yet. We also saw this at the U.S. Open, and there was a lot of different shots that were getting played other than just the standard wedge shot high up onto the green. So I got three choices for us to overcome the, the hazards that we have of imperfect grass, keeps the ball on the ground, gives us a better chance to make a good score. The first choice we have is what we saw the U.S. Open champion Martin Keimer use exclusively at Pinehurst, which was his putter. So when we're going to hit the putter, we're going to have to go through a lot of grass that is not perfectly mown. So this is a safer play, even for the higher handicapper. We just have to make sure that we make a big enough stroke to roll it across the green because we have to run it through the rough onto the green. The second choice is an eight iron. So what we want to do with an eight iron is we want to remember we're trying to keep our arms in the club created a lowercase y. And if my head is 12 o'clock and the ground is six, I'm going to make a swing that goes two hours. I'm going to go from five to seven and the setup will be two forwards and a back. I'm going to lean my weight a little forward. I'm going to place my hands off the forward thigh and the ball off my back foot. The third choice and my favorite choice for almost every golfer is the hybrid, a club we use off the fairway. It has just enough loft to kind of get it running, but it's hot and makes the ball run forward. So what we're going to do, we're going to grip this like a putter. We're going to grip all the way down to the end of the grip, and we're going to stand it up like we're hitting a putt. And we're going to hit it just like a putt, but it's going to have more loft than the putter, and it's easier to get through the higher grass. Use one of these three clubs to overcome the difficulties we have this year on our golf courses. You'll lower your score, have more fun, and that's what it's all about. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional. Stay with us next week for another tip to improve your game. Hi, I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional here at West Haven Golf Club in Franklin, Tennessee. And we're getting ready to discuss the options that we have when we're hitting a shot to the green with not much green to work with and we have a lot of rough and fairway grass to carry to get onto the green. On tour, most of the guys you'll see, especially Phil Mickelson and Tiger Woods, they've made the flop shot famous. But I'm going to show you how you can use your geography and the terrain to maybe help you with an easier decision. So here's what we have. We have a downhill shot with the green funneling hard to the right. This is what the pros would do. The pros would take their lob wedge and they'd get set up and they'd lean their weight forward. They'd open up the face and make a really big swing hoist it up into the air, and let it run down to the hole. That was a very big swing with a whole lot of risk, and only the best players in the world are good enough to hit that shot. Our second choice, and what I believe is the best choice for the average golfer, is a pitching wedge. So instead of making this really big high swing with a flop shot, we can make a much shorter swing and let the terrain, which is almost acting as a ramp, run it down to the hole. So we get our weight forward and our hands forward, ball off the back foot, and just bump it down the hill, Follow these simple fundamentals of understanding your terrain and your surroundings to help you make a simpler choice to hit a shot closer to the hole. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional. Stay with us next week for another tip to improve your game. Hi, I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional here at West Haven Golf Club in Franklin, Tennessee. And what we have here is a very long 45-foot putt for birdie up over a hill and down the hill with a big break. We have over a 50% chance of three-putting this hole, but the chance of making it is less than 2%. So here's the strategy to make sure we don't three-putt. We want to think about where do we want to hit our second putt from. Statistics show we have a better chance of making a putt from below the hole putting up the hill than putting down the hill. Here's why. A putt that is six feet down the hill with some slope will break two and a half times as much as a putt from six feet up the hill because the ball that's rolling faster going up the hill will break less. So we need to take that into consideration when hitting this putt. So my game plan is to run the ball just a little bit past the hole to the right of the hole so I have an uphill putt that breaks just barely to my right. This will, because I have a game plan, this will allow me to make a freer stroke and increase my chances of making this long putt. By having a game plan of knowing that I was going to roll the ball by the hole, it freed me up to roll my ball aggressively to the hole. This is critical because now I don't have to worry about three putting. No three putts equals victory. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional. Stay with us next week for another tip to improve your game.
Hi, I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teach Professional here at West Haven Golf Club in Franklin, Tennessee. The five-foot putt is the putt length that separates the best putters on the tour from the worst putters on the tour. But it's the four-foot putt that separates it from the average golfer. I got a great drill to help you make more putts. So what we need for this drill is 10 balls. And what we're going to do is we're going to place the 10 balls in a circle around the hole, four feet from the hole. The reason why I like this is many of our first putts are going to come from 30 feet. And I call this the eight-foot blanket. It's not that difficult to roll that putt into the eight-foot blanket, but we can't afford to three-putt from there. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to make all ten of these putts before we go home. So this particular putt is up the hill and is going to break to the left. One of the reasons why I love this drill is it's going to allow us to see all the different breaks with all the different slopes. And my last putt is going to be down the hill and break left to right. I call this drill the Wheel of Fortune. If we make all 10 in a row, we're going to make a fortune. I'm Virgil Herring, PGA Teaching Professional. Stay with us next week for another tip to improve your game.